Our next speaker is Stephen Umbrello. Stephen is currently the managing director at the Institute for Ethics and Emerging Technologies. Uh, his speech title is Shikake, Japanese Nudging and Designing AI for Social Good. Please join me in welcoming Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Hi, everyone. I'm going to begin by sharing my screen. Perfect. So uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where each of you are listening and are coming from. Uh, the concept of AI and its relationship to, to art is a novel one. And despite not being an artist, it uh, has an importance that is not lost on me. Uh, as you heard, I'm currently the managing director at the Institute for Ethics and Emerging Technologies as well as a researcher at the University of Turin. And what these roles have in common is that they both focus on responsible innovation with regards to AI. Fundamentally, my approach looks at how design is an area we have to intervene at to ensure that we can guide or create the kind of future that we want to live in. And this requires not only foresight, but also beneficial behavioral nudges to ensure that we ourselves do not act recalcitrant towards those goals. Fundamentally, what I want to show here tonight is uh, aesthetics, art is ethics. So I'm sure, let me just... Uh, I'm sure that some of you may be wondering what this word shikake means and what exactly it has to do with AI. But before we get into that, this talk is used more as an experiment, if anything, to run through some of my ideas with regards to designing proper nudging AI technologies. So don't expect any uh, conclusions or recommendations, but instead some food for thought with regards to possible ways forward. So in the short talk, we're going to explore three primary things. What is shikake? Why use shikake? And how we can apply it to AI? So let's begin. The field of shikakeology, as Osaka University professor of economics, uh, Nahiro Matsumura, defines it, is the study of shikakes, things that influence our behavior, not through direct requests or demands, but rather through mindful, pleasant designs that invite action. It's a field that has the potential to shape our personal habits, boost our professional success, and even tackle social issues such as public health and civic engagement. It is often thought that small trigger can change behavior and result in a big social impact. So you can see here is a famous example. It's a fly target etched on the urinals in men's restrooms in Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam. When men see the fly target, their behavior is expected to change due to the temptation to aim at the fly. The fly target in urinals is a small trigger that causes a slight behavioral change, but it's reported that spillage was reduced 80%. This eventually reduces cleaning expenses and water usage. Consequently, it has a broader impact on reducing environmental pollution. There are examples of the small triggers causing a big difference phenomenon at the personal level, such as increased exercise and healthier eating. These are manifest in pro-social behavior at the government level, like reducing garbage, wasted food, traffic accidents, and crime. Shikake is a Japanese word with various meanings depending on the context. According to Shokugakan's progressive Japanese English dictionary, shikake means a device, mechanism, contrivance, and a system as a noun, and to start, set up, prepare, and challenge as a verb. Here we want to understand shikake as a complex integration of these definitions to describe an approach to trigger behavioral changes that will solve social and personal problems as the problems we are targeting result from our own behavior. Changing behavior is a straightforward approach to solve them. The aim of Shikake's approach is to solve the problem through behavior, not through function. So avoiding the techno fix uh, temptation. This is the most unique and significant aspect of the Shikake approach. In contrast to the Shikake driven approach, one might consider a high tech device that automatically solves problems without people's help. 
However, such a high tech driven approach is feasible if and only if the device can be created, obviously. Practically, this is not a realistic choice in most cases, and it requires considerable effort in terms of fabrication costs, expertise, and technology. Here we can already begin to see the contract between the technofix ideology of using AI technology to solve a host of human problems. So let's consider a simple example of garbage separation. Here the figure shows a trash bin with a built-in high-tech device that can automate automatically separate plastic bottles and cans and a trash bin with a transparent structure. The transparent trash bin does not seem particularly special, but it encourages people to separate bottles and cans more than a normal non-transparent trash bin would. The items that people throw away are visible to others with a transparent trash bin. This elicits pro-social behavior because people don't want to lose face and thereby have their self-esteem compromised. In addition, the government in the transparent trash bin becomes a social norm, indicating that people have correctly separated their trash. Deviations from the social norm require special circumstances. In this case, the transparency of the trash bin becomes an effective shikake to make people aware of their own behavior. The mechanism behind shikake cases covers a wide range of physical and psychological triggers. A physical trigger is used to ignite a psychological trigger, and the psychological trigger works as a driving force for changing behavior. For example, cars are convenient for transportation, but every year many people are injured or killed in traffic accidents. Various shikakes have been considered to make traffic safer. So you can see in this figure here shows a speed camera that feeds back the speed of a car with a speed limit sign. The system is not connected to a police officer or to police offices, so there's no force compelling the driver to slow down. However, the system works well in practice. The feedback of a car's speed to the driver becomes a good trigger to change from mindless to mindful driving. Shikakes are often simple. A simple hollow pipe placed at eye level to direct attention tempts us to look through it a urinal with a bullseye to direct another sort of attention, a piano staircase to en encourage exercise, a miniature Shinto gate placed at the floor in a high-traffic hallway to discourage littering. Yet the simplicity can be extremely powerful, engaging our curiosity in ways that directly uh, stated guidelines or brute force application of willpower never will. But what exactly has this to do with AI? Well, traditional medical practices and relationships are changing given the widespread adoption of AI-driven technologies across various domains of health and healthcare, for example. Okay. In many Hello, cases, Steven. these technologies are not specific Hello, to the domain of healthcare. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Are existent, ubiquitous, and commercially available systems that are upskilled to integrate these novel practices of care. Steven? Given the... what. Yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, your voice seems to be very, um, like, broken. Okay. Uh, so can you turn off the original sound and ad adjust your voice input so that it can be more smooth? So, sorry, what do I have to do? Uh, I have to begin by doing what? Sorry. Uh, can you just turn off your original sound and adjust your voice? So input? how do I turn off the original sound? Sorry. Um, okay, give me a second and I will ask the technical team. It, it, it's a little bit, it's a little bit hard to hear you, but uh, I'm getting extreme feedback on my end. I, So the, in the language section, the, the panel, there is a button named um, put off your original sound. Can you see that? So in the language, no, I don't see that. I, I like, I see under original audio, English, Chinese, and then unmute original audio. That's the only options I see there. Maybe it's the uh, mute the original audio. 
Okay, so I did that now. Is that better? Yeah, it sounds better. It, uh, everybody can hear me now? Yes, much more smoother. So uh, we will continue the speech, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so as I was saying, so given the widespread adoption coupled with uh, the dramatic changes in practices, new ethical and social issues emerge as a consequence of how these systems nudge users into making decisions and changing behaviors. So digital health provides clinicians, patients, caregivers, care receivers, generally construed, as well as the whole health system with new tools and possibilities, ranging from the use of wearables, like you see here in connected medical devices, such as smartwatches and activity tracers, to the spread of AI decision-making systems like chatbots, digital assistants, or persuasive apps that can help in monitoring health metrics. Specifically, machine learning models are being more customized and targeted treatments, or even for disease present, prevention and prediction. And moreover, AI and machine learning have been used to support the programming and planning of patient management and resource allocation to specific geographical areas. Now, the pandemic, AI is also helping provide personalized information and recommendations to patients who have symptoms of COVID-19. So where exactly does Shikake fit in? Often thought of as paternalistic nudging, like Shikake overcomes agents' cognitive defects or lack of information and behavioral biases and steers them towards target acts that are deemed to be good for them. The term digital nudging emerged only recently in engineering and computer systems literature and is defined as use of user interface design elements, uh, elements to guide people's behavior in digital choice environments. We can then call any type of nudge that fits within our understanding of shikake a digital shikake. The fundamental difference between traditional shikake and digital shikake lies in the fact that the latter allows for greater versatility and opportunities to choice architects due to the much more dynamic, informational, and automated character of the digital environment. New digital patient-centric shikake with tools such as simplifications, default settings, decision staging, feedback, reminders, and others offer virtual medical care and assistance in and outside of hospitals and in domestic or commercial care practices, even outside the healthcare domain. Using big data and predictive analytics techniques, a digital nudge is ubiquitous, emergent, interconnected, a mesh, and capable of continuously reconfiguring itself due to the feedback it receives from its environment and interactions with users and other systems. As already mentioned, nudging is a continually growing practice within the domain of healthcare, technology, and in their intersection. Given the potentially deleterious consequences of recalcitrant nudging, as well as its potential boons if employed responsibly, it makes sense that the responsible innovation of nudging technologies in the field of healthcare is aligned with a design approach that is principled on similar commitments to avoid harm and actively contribute to doing good. In order to do this, it bears noting the various sources of values that are relevant to these technologies and their stakeholders, the context relevant values, as well as those values that are specific to AI technologies. So Luciano Floridi, the Google philosopher and, and other people at the Oxford Internet Institute provide what's arguably the most comprehensive set of norms for guiding designers of AI systems to avoid most ethical harms. You can see here the seven factors, or AI for social good norms, are a set of principles that are particularly relevant for the design of AI towards social good. And this table lists the AI for social good factors, along with a summative imperative that Floridian companies state that designers must follow to put these factors into practice. So the seven norms should not be read as rank ordered, but mutually co-varying and co-constituting one another in design paradigms. Similarly, the more relevant to the specific types of technologies in question, they seemingly map onto the higher level, more abstract values of the EI, of the EU high level expert group on artificial intelligence, which are human autonomy, prevention of harm, fairness, and explicability. We don't have the time here to discuss in depth the definition or examples of the seven factors. You can read that at length. 
elsewhere. However, it's important here is that the AI for social good factors function like norms, given that they explicitly state maximizing or minimizing certain values or design requirements, and thus bridge the gap between abstract values and concrete design requirements. More clearly stated, what you see here is that the norms VI AI for social good factors provide a bridge between higher level AI values, like those by the high level expert group, and more technical design requirements. So this is the language of engineers. However, in order for this approach to be operationalized by designers, principal design methodology is required that can allow for this bridging between abstract value and norms to be adopted systematically. And I adopt the value-sensitive design approach to technology design as a methodology of choice, given that VSD is principled upon a value norms design requirement structure as a fundamental method for designing socially beneficial AI shikake. Currently, there's over two decades worth of scholarship directly on the VSD approach that explores its fundamental philosophical foundations, methodological issues and capabilities, as well as potential application to existent and future technologies. Value-sensitive design is often defined as a theoretically grounded approach to design of technology that accounts for human values in a principled and comprehensive manner throughout the design process. The primary methodological objective of VSD is an explicit investigation and incorporation of moral values in design. And it does this through the recursive feedback of three iterative stages or investigations, conceptual, empirical, and technical investigations. So conceptual investigations are the identification of both direct and indirect stakeholders that are or will be affected by a system, like the user, but also indirect stakeholders like the environment or non-human animals. The formulation of working definitions and prima facie value tensions that may arise. Empirical investigations examine the context and emerging values of stakeholders, eliciting their values and reformulating the working definition of the conceptual investigations as necessary. And finally, technical investigations look at the discrete technology in question, determining how the architecture itself of the technology can support or constrain the values in question. Tools like the values hierarchy are useful in helping designers to translate what are often abstract values into more tangible design requirements. A values hierarchy is fundamentally built on these three basic layers. Values, which are often general and, and understood as needing to be promoted and designed for as much as possible. Norms, which are boundary conditions or prescriptions for actions. And finally, design requirements, specific technical requirements that should be designed for as much as possible. So in order to illustrate how the VSD approach can be used to design responsible Chicago, we'll take up an example of Amazon's Alexa digital voice assessment as a use case. The four stages of the iterative process that I, can, that I have developed are context, value identification, and formulating design requirements as well as prototyping. But for the, first, for the sake of time, we'll take up the approach directly and illustrate its application to Amazon's Alexa. So in 2019, Amazon announced a new partnership with the UK's National Health Service. This pro, uh, partnership enabled the Amazon Alexa voice assistant to offer the NH NHS uh, health advice to users at home. Moreover, in the announcement of the new Alexa healthcare skills developed in collaboration with six companies, Amazon says that now Alexa is able to follow the U.S. health insurance portability and accountability act of 1996 and transmit the received protected health information. So these new Alexa skills are designed to help users manage different healthcare needs such as the coordination and scheduling of appointments, care plans, health care account information, the tracking and monitoring of vitals and symptoms, and finally, the receiving of insights and health nudges or recommended courses of action and suggestions that are personalized to them. So the social cultural context in which a technology is being developed is crucial to assess its design and deployment. Amazon is not a healthcare company, but it now allowed to handle health data and patient information. 
in the case of Amazon Alexa's new healthcare skills, the context of use, which can be understood as the motivating force behind this development, includes a diverse range of factors. This need not reduce the pressure and burden on the NHS healthcare companies and clinicians, especially by providing information on common illnesses. The need to render easily accessible information and useful health information and tools, especially to vulnerable groups such as elderly and frail patients at home and in residential and nursing homes, differently abled patients, or generally to those who cannot always get access to care and know how and when uh, to get such access. The need to improve patients' adherence to their medications and for more accurate, preventative, and personalized medicine and more beneficial health comes. So, I'll, I'll just skip ahead just for uh, the sake of time. Um, the value, um, in, in cases that involve predictive analytics, profiling, and hyper shakake, these highly interconnected digital shakake, generally understood, traditional informed consent or the manifest and transparent character of the public, uh, publicly available principle are not sufficient elements to preserve and respect users as deliberative choice and freedom. Beyond the individual level of users' behavior, what is at stake in AI shikake in healthcare is the nature and public value of health data, the social, economic, and political consequences and factors that this may entail. And some scholars have recently suggested, and beyond the issues of transparency and public publicity and privacy, we should assess and promote modalities that make technological influences such as AI Chicago is also understandable and explicable to the users and society at large. Finally, there's the stage of uh, prototyping that I mentioned as one of the four steps. This doesn't involve merely the testing of technical aspects and functioning of technological systems, but also in a more fundamental way, the analysis of the ethical and social effects that can emerge from their development in a field of use. This should include the development and co-creation of mock-ups or field deployments that aims to identify value tensions and other factors and implications for the direct and indirect stakeholders and the technology at stake. The case of Amazon Alexa is a relevant one, given only uh, not only its ubiquity, a lot of people have it, but its accessibility and ease of adoption and implementation into existing health domains in both those of caregivers and receivers. Alexa's pervasiveness exacerbates the technology's systemic interactions that follow from its widespread adoption. Technologies like Alexa can become pervasive across multiple vectors, such as those of geography, culture, demographics, among other factors. At this stage, given its limited deployment, both technical as well as, as, well as social and ethical functioning, according to the guidelines, can be pen tested in a secure way. Emergent issues or recalcitrance can then result in the triggering of another iteration of this four stage cycle. So I, I know that this was uh, quite a mouthful, but in the end, what I'm essentially arguing is that we can design AI in such a way in collaboration with artists that nudge people towards beneficial actions that are not coercive, that are not paternalistic. And what that means is that it's not just economic values that are at stake, but also fundamental stakeholder values. And that does not just include human values, but also non-human values and the environment at, at large. So I'll end there. Thank you, Stephen. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think if I understood, uh, because it was a little bit hard to hear you, uh, what, from what I, I, I gathered is that uh, what you're trying to propose is a very big, ambitious uh, um, proposal for an AI system, the nudging on the AI level is a very interesting concept. And uh, I think uh, it, it, it requires a lot of work because number one, um, it is something that could uh, um, narrow down into a problem that we have in the case of Alexa, for example, but it can also uh, present us uh, with unexpected uh, results when the nudging happens on, on the shiitake. You know, you, you start with shiitake, that is going to produce a certain effect. And then what if it produces another effect that you didn't expect? 
which is the whole point of uh, the AI. And that's why we are, at least at this conference, that's what we're interested in, in the unexpected, which is actually better than the one that we um, 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 expected to, 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 to start with. So I think, I, think uh, I mean, again, if I understood well, uh, uh, you're setting a whole um, uh, path for a different type of design in a way. It's a meta design, a meta uh, AI based uh, design, which could have a very high um, um, impact. And, uh, you know, starting, I mean, uh, especially today, uh, uh, because, you know, AI is kind of like left behind. It's more like for doing uh, mundane things. It never is, it's never even used in design for that matter. I mean, I've ever seen most of the design is basically digital design, but it's not AI in that sense. So um, I think that's a very interesting uh, contribution. But uh, I think at the interest of time, um, we have to uh, go on. So I uh, thank you so much. We appreciate your uh, uh, presentation and uh, um, hope to talk to you in person soon. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Stephen.